Yes, confirm. See the seamstresses union. Relative to the rest of the Barrens, Touristville is a neon clothed oasis. At its heart is the seamstresses union, housed in an old brownstone building on the corner of illegal and opportunity. Bums handle together. Gangers run strut the streets, and the occasional salary man comes slumming. The Union Building has been retrofitted, rebuilt, and restored so many times that it's like an aging starlet wearing too much makeup in an attempt to stay young. The wild ivory, ivy growing out of the gutters adds to this effect. As you enter, the murmur of hushed conversation washes over you. The dive bar denizens raise their heads, take your measure, and then go back to their business. This is the kind of place where everyone knows your name but keeps to themselves. Sometimes you wanna go where everybody knows your name. Da da da. And they're always glad you came. Cherry Bomb. Bartender is a striking elf sporting a perfectly toned body, perfectly pouted, li pouty lips, and perfectly tapered ears. Her eyes harmonize, save me, and take me in equal measure, hitting just the right notes for the maximum extraction of tips. Hey there, I haven't seen you here before. What can I get you? Something dirty in a clean glass? How about a date? From the looks of this place, I can probably get anything I want. I found a bar tab with Cowdy's name on it. Is she here? She looks worried. No, I think she's away on business. Business, huh? Is she a shaman with a name like Coyote? She laughs. No. Uh, she shot a Coyote once, thinking it was a shaman who double-crossed her. We've been calling her a Coyote ever since. Her face falls. She's been missing since yesterday. Some people think the Ripper got her. But I know her coyote can take care of herself. She starts to turn away when a man with the face of a survivor and the zeal of a convert tugs at her arm hard. It's clear the two have a history. They try to keep their voices low, but the intensity of their conversation makes them easy to overhear. Shane. Cherry, you have to listen to me. If you stick around here, you could end up dead or worse. The Ripper is out there, and he's real. The last killing happened just down the block, and now Coyote's missing. They'll probably find her tomorrow in a dumpster without her head. Come on, Cherry Bomb, think. I think plenty, Shane. I'm getting a f freaking D from UW in Neurophys... Neuro prosthetics studying under ojimans and how am i paying for it bartending tips there are faster ways for a baron's girl to earn that kind of scratch but i'm not taking them so what do you want from me i want what you want a better life a better world for everyone the universal brotherhood can give you that i've heard this all before this isn't some trick to get us back together. Things are different now. I'm different now. The Brotherhood. Cherry Bomb's pretty face is hard, armored in lipstick, and low expectations. The Universal Brotherhood is for other people, Shane. Rich Bellevue types who can afford their membership fees and voluntary donations. This isn't about money. It's about binding the world together in Brotherhood. Come with me. Attend a discovery meeting. Get to the core of who you are. I heard Lynn Telestrian give a talk last night called The New Family of the Sixth World. I've got a family right here, Shane. They're drunks and low lowlifes and working girls, and I choose them over any of your Brotherhood members. Now, Buzz, I need to get back to work with body language that leaves no question that the conversation is over. Cherry Bomb turns her back on him. Sorry, I got interrupted. I heard he's got the strength of the righteous, doesn't he? 
Boyfriend, find religion? Sorry, you have to go through that. Sounds like you've got big plans for yourself. Boyfriend, find religion. Her pretty eyes narrow. Something like that. You've got a look that says you're not just here for the entertainment. Are you a badge? Do I look like a cop? Nope. I think you know the answer to that. I think you know the answer to that. Mm-hmm. I do. You're independent. We're trying to spot a bronze the minute they walk in here. Something I can help you with? I have a few questions. Maybe I'm going to look around. I have a few questions. Ask away. Tell me about this place. Some come here for booze, some for companionship. Others are looking for something they can't get anywhere else. If it's illegal or immoral and it can be bought, sold, rented, or consumed, you can probably find it here. The union seems to attract people like you. Is that you were talking to? Ever hear the name Sam Watts? Who runs this place? I want to talk to him. Ever hear the name Sam Watts? Sam was a regular customer and a regular pain in the arse for as long as I've been here. Talked a big game, but he was always broke. As soon as he got any money in his pockets, it went straight to his head. Chips, drugs, or booze. Cody had a soft spot for him, though. Did you see Sam on the night he died? No, that was Coyote's shift. Who runs this place? I want to talk to them. Have you Miss Kubota? She's in the back room. You can't miss her. Thanks for the intel. I appreciate the help. Gutter punks have to stick together. Who was that you were talking to? Shane, old boyfriend. He used to work here. Then one day he saw a billboard for the Universal Brotherhood. And that was that. Went to a meeting. Made new friends. Moved in with them. I was happy for him until he started coming around trying to recruit me. I don't need that, Drek. Talk to you later. Alright, let's go talk to this person over here. That's not how Coyote does it. Well, Coyote isn't here, buddy. Eric Mermsman. Hey, guy. I got some extra outfits I'm trying to unload. You want first dibs? I'll take a look. Okay, I've got 1,290. And my current equipment is apparently so basic and standard you can't sell it. So let's close that window out. Alley Punk decreased one step above a street ganger. Grants HP plus three. That's armor four. Secure ninja clothing. Armor 3, Adept Ninja Outfits that grants the wearer dodge plus 1. The tourist look, Armor 3, just toss it on and head on out. Perfect for working in the shop. Grants Intelligence plus 1, which I'm an intelligence character. Salish Runner, Armor 2. Clothes directly imported from the Slash Council. Grants Charisma plus 1. 3 Minute Armor, Armor 2. Uh, clothing for that traditional image look grants willpower plus one. The black hat, the coolest hat in the shadows that grants intelligence plus one. Secure adept clothing, uh, basic clothing for the shadow running adept, basic clothing for a shadow runner, basic clothing for a shadow running decker, which that's what I own. Okay, all those are basic. We're not worried. So I can get armor 3 with intelligence 1 or armor 2 charisma 1. I want to get armor 2 charisma 1 so I can be talking. Alright, so we're going to confirm. And then we're going to equip it. And then we're going to confirm. I'm going to talk to him one more time take a look and then we want to view sell items I can sell it now so I guess you just can't be naked and then we're gonna sell that all right exit makes sense all right let's go talk to Jin Parks Jin Parks the Asian woman's expression reads open for business, but her demeanor reads dealer rather than companion. 
She has a jack on her neck, a gun on her hip, and a chip on her shoulder. She eyes you with a sneer. You look like you could use some firepower or something simple. I got guns so smart they practically fire themselves. You're looking for tech? Got some of that too, if that's the way you roll. Show me what you got. So I currently own that there. Yeah, she doesn't really have anything I want. You can break it up looking at weapons, drones, and consumables. Okay, we're going to hit exit because that's not what I want. Let's talk to this guy over here. Mr. Clue. Posted at the doorway to the VIP section is a tower of troll muscle wrapped in an impossibly tailored suit. Whether the product of good genes or expensive aftermarket cosmetic work, the troll's gleaming horns perfectly frame his face, and his polished tusks and goatee accentuate the set of a lantern of a, a lantern jaw. Welcome, please behave yourself. Will do. You get trouble in here often. You must be the union's hard muscle. Funny place for the architect to put a wall. Uh, will do. You get trouble in here often. Nothing external look can't. Solve. Well, one second. All right, nothing a stern look can't usually solve. Get business here. Looking into the death of Sam Watts, yes, it's none of yours. I was a friend of Sam Watts, no one. Sure, everyone here knew Sam. Shame to lose a part of the family. There's the sharpness in Clue's eyes, the look of a man who has seen much and earned wisdom at a young age. Figured Sam was the type who needed to be thrown out on occasion. You ever have Sam toss out his... Ugh, you ever have to toss Sam out on his arse? In your role here, I suppose, you often escorted Sam to the door. Yes, albeit gently. Sam was a drunk, but he usually wasn't a violent one. Usually, what about the night he died? He was a bit agitated, didn't catch the specifics, might have been over a woman. Thought I was going to have to show him out, but I had to deal with a couple of rival go-gangers posturing for one of the working girls upstairs. Jake helped Sam out instead. Thanks for the info. Keep those eyes and ears open. I appreciate you talking with me. Happy to help. Alright, let's go this way. Johnny Clean. The man is dressed like a janitor, but is wearing unusually clean overalls. He's tall, real thin, has a cunning look in his eye that says he's more than just a maintenance man. Howdy. Name's Johnny Clean. You knew? Yeah, first time just getting a look at this place. I'll mind my business, you mind yours. I am. Imagine you've seen all sorts of things in a place like this, eh? True, quite true, and I keep my mouth shut about it, too. That's the secret to keeping a job here and staying alive in general. Gotta work, see you around. Noog. Covered in glowing magical talismans and fetishes, the troll does not seem fully of this world. He mumbles to himself constantly, apparently participating in several conversations at once, but with entities that you can neither see nor hear. Mutter, I told you it's not like that at all. Mutter, bring me proof and you shall have it. Mutter, I am honored your majesty. Guy's a bit crazy. Mutter, that was why I said to use mustard instead of catsup. Mutter, Forgive me, Jean. I was a fool. Mutter. He looks you in the eye. His other conversations on hold. You may peruse my magical wares and see their glory. I would like to see your wares. And this is all magical stuff. Weapons, spells, conjuring, chi, consumables. Yeah, I'm not uh, I'm not using spells, so we can leave him alone.
Miss Kubota. Miss Kubota watches you cross the room, sizing you up as you approach. As you get closer, you can see that she's of mixed race, African and Japanese. Her demeanor says, this is my house, mess with it at your peril, but her eyes twinkle with a playful light when she speaks. Kanbanwa, con con good evening. Kanbanwa, good evening. Are you enjoying the seamstress's union? This should be plenty for a man like you to enjoy. She eyes you closely, or is this business? I'm tempted to ask what's upstairs, business. Just need a moment of your time, Miss Kubota. I have topics to discuss. Soka, and why should I help you? Sam Watson looking for his killer. Jake sent me. I'm hunting the Ripper. Her face brightens, amused. Ah, so you are the little insurance policy he would go on about when he was drunk. His avenging angel who would strike back for him from beyond the grave. What do you want to know? How well did you know Sam? I knew him. We all did. Sam was a regular here whenever he could beg or borrow enough yen to become altered in some way. Drugs, chips, alcohol. Didn't matter to Sam as long as it was bent. He was always looking for this next fix. He clung to this place like it was his lifeline and we treated him as part of the family. Even if none of us truly liked him except Coyote. Did you see Sam on the night of his death? He was here quite inebriated as he often was. Coyote was working bar that night as she informed me that Sam was getting rowdy and belligerent with other customers when I requested he leave. He refused. My bouncer, Mr. Clue, was off dealing with another issue, so I requested that Jake escort Sam out the back door to the alley. That was the last I saw of either of them. Why is this place called the Seamstress Union? During the gold rush years, there was a census, and the politicians wanted as high number as possible to gain power and revenue. To bolster their numbers, they decided to include all the working girls, of which there were many to the roles. However, given the times, they could not list the girls' true occupation, so they entered them all as seamstresses. When a girl accumulated enough money to open her own place of business, she named it the Seamstresses Union, so potential workers would know that they would be treated fairly there, and thus a rich tradition was born. So you're a former seamstress. I know perhaps when we know each other more, I will reveal more about myself. For now, enjoy the union. One more question, can you tell me where to find Coyote? Face darkens. Would that I could have not seen her in two days. She's a smart woman and quite dangerous, but I fear for her. She's dangerous, why do you fear for her? She's smart, why fear for her? I'm sure she can take care of herself. Perhaps all the same, I wish I could see her. She is like a daughter to me. Her room is upstairs. If you're looking for her, I invite you to examine it. You may be able to uncover her whereabouts. I would not normally betray her privacy in this way, but she's missed two shifts now and cannot be reached on her, her comm. It is unlike her. If something has happened, I will not have inaction on my conscience. Here is the key. All right, so we now have the key to go upstairs. And so we're going upstairs. All right, and there's the locked door, and here's some open doors. Let's open this one. We're just going to check out this place, see if there's anything going on. Nope. And let's open up this one. Alright, lots of stuff to look at. Let's start taking a look. Looks like Cody keeps her clothes in boxes on the floor. The stand is littered with action, movies, and cigarette butts. Frame painting of the Chicago skyline done in the stylized silhouette. Cody's bed has a diary with several papers sticking out of it. Open the diary to the first paper. Mm. Okay, open the diary to the first paper. 
There's a receipt stuck between the pages and a diary entry. Uh, inspect the receipt. A receipt for a Browning Max Power pistol from Jin Park downstairs with a note saying how big guns on hot women turn her on. Okay, read the diary entry. I came back from my shift to find four of Paco's goons sleeping on our apartment floor. It's getting frag and ridiculous. I want to be with him, with the real Paco, but this cutter dreck keeps messing everything up. I love him, but he's totally different with the gang. It's how I make cash, baby, he always says. Try to tell him he doesn't need the cash. I can support us both with what I make at the seamstresses union, but he still goes on these runs. With these bozos all over my floor, I feel like he's just seen how far he can push me before I kick him out. I try to be patient, but why does it have to be all one way? As soon as the last cutter was out the door, I lost it. I told him if he ever pulled Drek like that again, that he would be sleeping in the alley. Of course, he begged and pleaded with me, telling me it wouldn't happen again. I don't want to deal with this anymore, but I don't want him to leave. He's the reason I got through all that stuff last year. Got my bartending license, got this apartment, and this life. I know he cares about me and loves me more than his involvement with the Cutters. I just wish I could slice out that gang from our life together. Slice out the fear that comes along with it. Flip to a different page. Let's go to the second paper. The paper has a handwritten poem on it and the diary entry. Read the poem. Let's just say that Paco should stick to guns and motorcycles and leave the poetry to others. <laughs> Read the diary entry. Sometimes it seems like Paco reads my mind or my diary. Maybe he does the latter. I wouldn't be surprised. Hi, Paco. Ever since last week, he hasn't mentioned the cutters once. He leaves the apartment with a see you in a few hours, babe, and returns later without comment. Don't know if it's really going to help for us to avoid the subject and conversation completely, but I have felt better without our constant arguing about it. Last two nights, I've come home from work to Paco waiting up for me, slatching on the old dumpster couch with the novel four inches from his face. Imagine that as I turn the key in the door, he perks up, makes himself look especially studious for when I get the door open. He seems superficially surprised to see me, but I love this little act. Uh, flip to a different page. This is a receipt. This is a receipt, an old photograph stuck between the pages. Uh, look at the receipt. A COD receipt for a special order of five pounds of zebra meat from Murray's Meat Emporium located near Pike Place Market. Look at the picture. The picture shows a young girl with caramel skin dark brown hair. She has a snake wrapped around her arm, yet she is smiling. The back of the photograph has shadow scrawled on it. Alright, flip to a different page. Is that the third page? Yeah, that was. Let's go to the fourth page. A receipt for a wall safe installed near the bathroom door set to a combination of 342436.1. Okay. And that was it. Okay, put the diary down. Okay, there's a wall safe. That must be it there. The broken mirror was hiding a small safe, and we'll use the combination. Safe beats careful, cheerfully in response, and the door comes open. Just a frag grenade. That was all that was in the safe. Nice. Let's look at the TV. This. Oh yeah, we've read that. Okay, so now we gotta do this computer here. A coyote's computer is ancient. Probably fished it out of a junkyard. It doesn't have a data jack, and the cracked display is covered with fingerprints. Tapping the keyboard causes the dust-caked fans to spin up. 
only to display on-screen password. Without the password, the only other button on screen is the password recovery option. Alright, I don't have decking 3, so select the password recovery. Please answer three security questions to reset password. Question 1, your first childhood pet. Paco, Fido, Shadow, Teddy, George, Fluffy, it's going to be Shadow. Answer stored. Question 2, your favorite musical acts. Concrete Dreams, Maria Merciel, The Elemental, Shield Wall, Starfire, and The Shadows. I think I saw Starfire somewhere. What is the name of your hometown? Denver, New York, Portland, Chicago, Berlin. See, there's a Chicago skyline. It's got to be Chicago. It's restored. Password has been reset to NQPABDST for security. Never write down your password logging you in. The computer has a basic list of applications. Let's check out calendar. Three days ago, meet with Delilah about gig. Today, meet Paco for date at Pike Place Market, due in 30 minutes. Contacts. Caddy's contact list has exactly one entry, someone named Paco. There is no com link number or other contact information form available. This does not seem like a very useful list of contacts. Access history. Quick scan of her recent searches shows that Cody has been reading a great deal about hellhounds. It also suggests more than a casual interest in vintage action figures. Leave the computer. Alright, so we know she's supposed to be meeting with uh, Paco. And that door is locked. What's this? There is a mid-grade security panel attached to the nearby door. It is set to require a password for enter entry. Decking hack the panel. I'll do that. I've got decking too. Alright, we can get in this room, so let's go. Get the teddy bear. Stuffed bear seems to be hiding something. Strength and willpower plus two and charisma and intelligence minus two for five rounds. What would you like to do with this item? Send this item to your stash. Let's send the item to my stash. Cause my uh I'm I'm fully loaded, bye bye. Is that the only thing in here? Just the nitro? Really? Yep. Sure was. Alright. Let's go down. Alright, let's talk to Miss Kaboto. How can I help you? Do you know Paco? He's a ganger, a member of the Cutters. He is a good kid in a nasty line of work. We're in Coyote against getting too attached to that type. They don't live long. Have you ever heard of Maury's Meat Emporium? Her face twists in disgust. No, I'm a vegetarian. Did you know Jen Parks sold Coyote a gun recently? I'd be more surprised if she hadn't. Bouncers can deal with most of the troublemakers. But around here, you need a gun. Just take the trash out to the dumpster. Coyote has a date with Paco at Pike Place Market in the next half hour. If you go down there, it might bring me some peace of mind. I'll call a cab for you. It should be able to get you there in time. Combate kudase. Good luck. Alright, so we got our next mission. And instead of taking said mission, I'm going to go ahead and save here. And I'm going to go ahead and stop uh, streaming for the day. So... I will see you guys tomorrow.